In this lecture, we will review the foundations of abnormal psychology and how it may differ from clinical psychology. Now, the term abnormal is the subject of considerable debate. What exactly is abnormal? What exactly is normal? And who gets to decide? The Societal norms that are often used to determine what is normal versus abnormal can shift over time. So settling on a standard definition isn't simple or straightforward. But what is abnormal psychology? Abnormal psychology focuses on the patterns of emotion, thought, and behavior that can be signs of a mental health condition, rather than the distinction between normal and abnormal. Psychologists in this field focus on the level of distress that behaviors, thoughts, or emotions might cause. If a behavior is creating problems in a person's life or is disruptive to other people, then this would be an quote-unquote abnormal behavior. In such cases, the behavior may require some type of mental health intervention. It is important that we define some key terminology when attempting to distinguish between abnormal psychology and clinical psychology. So again, abnormal psychology is the scientific study of abnormal behavior and mental disorders in order to describe, predict, explain, and change abnormal patterns of functioning. Therefore, abnormal psychology emphasizes on psychological science and research for the purpose of study of mental disorders. Research in abnormal psychology include investigation of the causes and treatment of psycho or what we call psychopathological conditions. Now, clinical psychology is the profession and academic discipline that is concerned with the application of psychological science to the assessment and treatment of mental disorders. The purpose of clinical psychology is to train professionals in clinical practice to diagnose and treat mental illness and conditions. Now, in a lot of my classes, I've got some courses strictly entitled Abnormal Psychology and others Clinical Psychology or even Applied Psychology. But in generally in my classes, I try to combine a lot of theory and application, hence abnormal and clinical psychology. Okay, so abnormal behavior can become pathological and has led to the scientific study of psychological disorders, or what we call psychopathology. Now, mental disorders are characterized by psychological dysfunction, which causes physical and or psychological distress or impaired functioning and is not an expected behavior according to societal or cultural standards. But the question is, how do we determine what abnormal behavior is? Now, this is according to the WSU.edu articles on abnormal behavior. So earlier I spoke about what we might consider normal versus abnormal behavior and that it could be very difficult to define. Equally challenging is understanding what abnormal behavior is. 
a publication which you will become intimately familiar with as a clinician and throughout this course is the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the fifth edition text revision, also known as the DSM-5-TR. Now, it states that although no definition can capture all aspects of the range of disorders contained in the DSM-5, certain aspects are required, and these include, also known as the four Ds, dysfunction, distress, deviance, and dangerousness. Let's start off with the first, dysfunction. Now, it includes clinically significant disturbance in an individual's cognition, emotion regulation, or behavior that reflects a dysfunction in the psychological, biological, or developmental processes underlining mental functioning. Abnormal behavior, therefore, has the capacity to make well-being difficult to obtain and can be assessed by looking at an individual's current performance and comparing it to what is expected in general or how the person has performed in the past. For example, a good employee who suddenly demonstrates poor performance may be experiencing an environmental demand leading to stress and ineffective coping mechanisms. Once the demand resolves itself, the person's performance should return to normal according to this principle. Okay, moving on to the next D of the four Ds, it is distress. When the person experiences a disabling condition in social, occupational, or other important activities, it can take the form of psychological or physical pain, or both concurrently. Alone, though, distress is not significant enough to describe behavior as abnormal. But why is that? The loss of a loved one, for example, would cause even the most quote-unquote normally functioning individual pain. An athlete who experiences a career-ending injury could display distress as well. Suffering is part of life and cannot be avoided. And some people who exhibit abnormal behavior are generally positive while doing so. Moving on to the next D, it's called deviance. Closer examination of the word abnormal indicates a move away from what is normal or the mean. And so is behavior that infrequently occurs, sort of an outliner of data. Now, our culture or the totality of socially transmitted behaviors, customs, values, technology, attitudes, beliefs, art, and other products that are particularly to a group determines what is normal. Thus, a person is said to be deviant when he or she fails to follow the stated and unstated rules of society called social norms. Now, social norms change over time due to shifts in accepted values and expectations. For instance, homosexuality was taboo in the United States just a few decades ago, but today it is generally accepted. Likewise, PDAs, or what we call public displays of affection, do not cause a second look by most people, unlike in the past, however, when these outward expressions of love were restricted to the privacy of one's own house or bedroom. I'm sure you've heard the phrase, get a room. Okay, now, 
So not part of the DSM conceptualization of what abnormal behavior is, many clinicians add a fourth D. It's called dangerousness to the list. It is when behavior represents a threat to the safety of the person or to others. It is important to note that having a mental disorder does not imply a person is automatically dangerous. The depressed or anxious individual is often no more threat than someone who is not depressed. As Heide and Burns in 2010 showed, dangerousness is more the exception than the rule. Still, mental health professionals have a duty to report to law enforcement when a mentally disordered individual expresses intent to harm another person or themselves. It is important to point out that people seen as dangerous are also not automatically mentally ill. Okay, so let's move on to ethnocentric concerns. Most definitions of psychological abnormality are devised by white middle-class men. It has been suggested that this may lead to disproportionate numbers of people from certain groups being diagnosed as abnormal. For example, in the UK, depression is more commonly identified in women and black people are more likely than their white counterparts to be diagnosed with schizophrenia. Similarly, working class people are more likely to be diagnosed with a mental illness than those from non-manual backgrounds. Okay, in summary, let's review this again. Abnormal behavior is a combination of personal distress, psychological dysfunction, devious from social norms, dangerousness to self and others, and costliness to society. Abnormal psychology is the scientific study of abnormal behavior, with the intent to be able to predict reliable, explain, diagnose, identify the causes of, and treat maladaptive behavior. The study of psychological disorders is called psychopathology. Mental disorders are characterized by psychological dysfunction, which causes physical and or psychological distress or impaired functioning and is not an expected behavior according to societal or cultural standards. In my next lecture, we will review the various perspectives on abnormal psychology. There are a number of different perspectives used in abnormal psychology. While some psychologists or psychiatrists may focus on a single viewpoint, many mental health professionals use elements from multiple areas in order to better understand and treat psychological disorders.